know, you maybe you'd have a couple mountain bumps, you know, sound like thunder coming, you'll see them rats going that way right there. They know what's good for you. I believe I'd bother in some guys. You might get yourself out of this old coal mine. You know, if you see that rat start scurrying around here about half crazy, really know what he's doing, I think I start looking, guys, and I tell you right now, something's going to happen or already happened. In West Virginia, I met up with the next coal miner, KC, who has been struggling to reach a higher level in pool despite practicing every day. And when speaking with KC before I arrived, he mentioned that he is constantly tweaking his grip, stance, stroke, and head alignment because that is where he thought his problems are. But after watching his ghost pull, I realized that his issues may be more related to pattern play and how he chooses angles. And KC is like many pool players, when they don't know what's wrong with their pool game, they usually start tweaking their stroke or stance when in many cases their stroke and stance may be fine. So they're never really dealing with the real issue that is plaguing their game, which is position play, ball pocketing, and focusing on problem areas. These are all issues that take a great deal of commitment and energy to correct. By the second week of training with KC, after several days of ball pocketing, center ball positioning, and pattern play, he now had a deeper understanding of patterns and had much tighter control over his cue ball positioning. He was now looking three and four balls ahead and using angles to help move the cue ball around the table. But the process to get to this point wasn't easy for KC. It was filled with struggles both physical and mental as he came to the realization that he now had to change his entire approach to the game. But although difficult, KC persevered and emerged from this process a different player with a totally different perspective on the game. The journey with KC began several months ago when his wife and daughter sent us emails asking us to help him with his pool game. My name's Brianna. And I'm Anna. And we are here to talk about my husband, Casey. He, we recently found out that he was chosen for the 14 day great pool experiment. We are so excited. For several days, I had heard my husband talk about um, Tor Lowry and his awesome videos. Um, he applied for the 14 day experiment and thinking that we could help him out, I decided to write an email to explain to Tor exactly how much passion my husband had for the game. We've been married for almost 20 years and ever since we were in high school, my husband has loved billiards. He plays billiards, he watches billiards, he just loves billiards. Um, right out of high school, I was very sick and um, I was in the hospital for several years and he managed to work full time and help take care of children and stood by my side um, and he still managed to shoot pool as much as he could so we really thought that my husband deserved a chance to um, have tour to come help him play better um, so I wrote the email and my daughter decided to write an email and I guess it worked so we are super excited we got to surprise him to let him know that he is going to be on it. I guess he was practically speechless. He really didn't know what to say. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy watching um, his program and we want to thank Tor and his crew so much for selecting him. It won't be taken for granted. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Tor Lowry. My mission is to make the game of pool easy for everybody. And I've traveled thousands of miles to help league and tournament players reach a level they've only dreamed of. And in some cases, I only have a limited time to find and correct their problems. So I have to teach at high speed. But for those that have 14 days, I'm going to forever change how they view this game. I'm going to show them an easier way to play this great game of pool. Three years ago, I set out to create a training program that was unlike anything else out there. I wanted to create a training program that could completely transform a player's game in just a few days. And not just transform their game, but increase their skill level by one to three balls.
So for the past two years, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars traveling around the country training selected participants for the 14 days training program. They didn't have to pay me a dime, but they did have to agree to let me document the entire training on video. And it's been through this process that I've been able to further refine this training program. The 14 days training program has now evolved into what I believe is the single best training program out there for transforming any player's game. And it can do this in just a matter of days. For instance, in Pipestone, Minnesota, two players who had never really played nine ball before and struggled to control their cue ball had completely transformed their games by the second week of training. One of the players, Shane, went on to beat the 10 ball ghost, winning a $200 prize, while the other player, Tim, went on to win a large nine ball tournament. In this season, we have several participants who will be going through this training session. Three of them will be going through the entire 14 days training, KC, Juliana, and Rob. Juliana and KC are tournament players who are looking to increase their skill level and to start doing better in tournaments. Rob is a wounded warrior who has a strong passion for pool and would like to reach a much higher level. He also credits pool for helping in his rehabilitation. Four of the participants, Kristen, Janet, Ra, and Eric, will go through an abbreviated 14 days training. Eric is a well-known junior player who has done very well in tournaments. Kristen is a league and tournament player looking to increase her skill level. Ra is the commentator for the Mez West State Tour and is also a strong player who feels he is just a couple tweaks away from playing at a much higher level. Janet is an ex-professional who stepped away from the game to deal with her health issues. She is now looking to get back into the game and return to her former glory. We also have another ex-professional that we will be announcing soon. So in Washington and Idaho, I trained both Juliana and Rob, and we'll be seeing more of their training in the future. Both participants put in a tremendous amount of hours training and practicing. Rob, a soldier who was severely injured in Afghanistan, has overcome tremendous obstacles to get to the point where he can even play pool again. He's a true inspiration, and it was an honor to train him. Juliana has a great passion for pool and was one of the most dedicated participants I've ever had. She put in over 11 hours a day training and practicing. All of her hard work paid off when she won her first large tournament playing as a master player soon after I left. A true testament to the power of hard work and dedication. Now I'm off to West Virginia to train KC, a former coal miner who is looking to become a pool monster. Feel the love from a beating heart and Catch a ride to the top of the world This is where we start No, we can't make it last forever We gotta use all the time we have And you know that we'll never say never If we ever get the chance and it's good to be alive My name is KC Holly. I'm getting ready to start the 14-day experiment with Tor Lowry. I've been playing pool for a long time and never quite able to get to the level I want to play at. I started playing pool at a young age, playing mostly on bar tables. Started playing on a nine foot. Been playing on a nine foot for about 15 years and just not able to get to the level that I want to, to play at competitively. A lot of tournaments I go to and people I play, I notice that they get better position and play better angles. A lot of players just just seem to have a lot a lot more knowledge than what I have. The improvement in my game has really slowed down. You know, not seeing the the progress as much as, as I used to. My main goal is to keep improving. I've like like I said the the progress has slowed down and, and I want I want to keep moving forward. I don't want to just be set on idle. We, he's shot pool ever since. We've been married for almost 18 years, and he's shot pool in high school. So, you know, going on 20 years, he's been shooting pool. 
started out at the bowling alley, I think he shot pool. Right after high school, I got really sick and stayed in the hospital quite often. So he managed, he was a coal miner and he worked in the mines a lot, um, worked all the time, took care of the kids and still shot pool all the time. <laughs> so it definitely, um, this is a good payback for him to be able to um, further his game. So I'm pretty happy about it. I didn't have a good, clear plan on patterns. Whenever I come to the table, I might think a ball or two ahead or or just even decide that the table was open and then I could, I didn't have no problem. I just played for an area and, and think that I could get there. So it wouldn't take but one or two shots before I was automatically in trouble. I may just look at the table and say that looks easy enough and just go to hitting balls before I ever planned anything. I just say, well, I need to be over here and I can I can get there from there. You know, I can I can move the ball. Balls are spread, there ain't nothing in trouble. And I just took for granted that if I could hit the shots, I could, I could get there. And I'd try to play across the line instead of with the line. I'd try to play small zone patterns that Way too much speed control <laughs> for me to have to try to play the positions that I play. So for Casey's training, we're gonna start with stroke drills and ball pocketing drills. We're then going to get into center ball positioning using half and full table pattern play. Casey's main issues are pattern play and cue ball control, so we're really going to focus on this aspect of the game. We'll then move on to full table pattern play with spin, finishing off with breaking, kicking, and safeties. The first three days of training we devoted to stroke drills and ball pocketing drills. And one issue that many players have is that their grip tightens up right after their tip impacts the cue ball. And although this may not affect their shot, if the player starts to tighten up in anticipation of the tip striking the cue ball, it may be enough to throw the shot off. And one remedy for this issue is doing a stroke drill where you exaggerate your follow through. For instance, in Washington, when working with Juliana, her follow through was very minimal since she had a tendency to slightly tighten up at impact. After several hundred stroke drills, her follow through was much less restricted. She was able to follow through more naturally. This stroke drill also allows the player to focus entirely on their stance, alignment, head position, and stroke. By the end of day one, Casey had performed several hundred stroke drills and his forward stroke was much more free flowing. Next, we moved on to ball pocketing drills using only center, center low, and center high. Before we can begin pattern play, Casey has to become more consistent at various shots which include kill shots, stun shots, draw shots and follow shots. This is the first step in getting his cue ball under control. And it's through this process that he'll develop a better feel for the sliding and rolling cue ball, as well as low and high stun shots. These are all shots that are essential to position play, so Casey needs to develop a feel for them. As we work our way through the ball pocketing stage, we can start to identify any issues that may be in his game. Next, we move down to half table pattern play. In half table pattern play, the participant can't use spin and has to keep the cue ball within one half of the table. This forces the player to rely on angles to move the cue ball around for position. And usually when a player misses their positional zone in a game, they can spin their way back into position and continue their run out. Removing spin and restricting the cue ball to half the table forces the player to be really aware of their speed control. And when it comes to half table pattern play and full table pattern play with spin, it's not about running out. It's about analyzing patterns, learning new shots, and fine tuning the shots the player already knows. To be successful, the player not only has to have a large repertoire of shots, but they also have to be able to execute the shots as they come up. The issue that KC has, along with many other players, is that there are a lot of shots that he isn't familiar with, which means he's choosing his runouts based on a limited knowledge of shots. 
This usually results in a much more difficult run-out pattern. Also, many of the shots that he is familiar with, he hasn't worked on them long enough to be as consistent as he should be. So as we work our way through half-table pattern play, we'll be coming across numerous shots that Casey will have to work on. And when we do run across problem shots, he'll have to write them down in his notebook so he can work on them later. Another issue that we ran into with KC was once he started to play more precise position, his ball pocketing percentage started to decrease. He was now missing quite a few balls. And this is a normal stage that every player goes through as they start focusing more on cue ball position. They have to develop a feel and trust for how angles move the cue ball off the object ball. And once this happens, they'll begin to pocket more balls as they start trusting their cue ball path. Shots that I would normally put outside on whenever we shot them center or center low or shooting them soft, uh, I didn't trust my stroke or my shot. Throwing a bunch of them into the rail, really, really easy shots. Throwing them in, throwing them into the rail. If I started thinking about where I wanted to hit the rail or where I wanted to be on the table, I was, I completely lose focus of shooting the ball. Set up for more angle. I, I think I set up about enough angle. I want to run from the angle. Yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm trying to set up straighter than what I need to be for the shot. Then you're trying to force the cue ball somewhere where it naturally didn't want to go. Run. Yeah, just use the angles. Nice and easy. Angles will do the work for you. Yeah. Now, this is going to be pretty simple. Get back up there. Do I want to go to the side rail now? Yeah, just a little bit. And then just come straight off of the rail for the floor and the side. Center. Yeah, basically just coming off that. Right This is this is where I have a lot of trouble with my game. I don't really I don't really know. I got a couple different options and I usually just say, you know, I'm gonna fire it over here, come off this rail, and then I can get to the four from either side. And then I do something without without thinking about it. <laughs> well what would happen if you just rolled the two in? Where would the cue ball go? If it you just soft rolled it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just go ahead and try. You don't yeah. even have to guess. Yeah, I know. It, it should just... I'm, I'm, I was afraid it put me on the wrong side of the three if it's rolling when it hits the two. I was afraid to go forward a little bit if I roll it in. Yeah. You weren't that far off. So now you know you can hit this a hair lower on your cue ball. Same speed. You start coming out a little higher. Okay. You just have to have a feel for where the cue ball is going to go if you roll it. Because I don't have that feel, that's why I want to try to fire it into a big open area. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that. By the end of day five, we begin to wrap up half table pattern play. But along the way, we discovered numerous shots that Casey needed to work on. And one thing I tell all my participants is that their problem shots will never go away on their own. It doesn't matter how good their stroke is. If they don't commit to training hard and mastering these shots, their game will always be limited. Next, we begin full table pattern play without spin. It's through these exercises that Casey will learn how to use angles to move the cue ball from one half of the table to the other half. Side rail and just roll right in on one. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Center, 
was actually missed or something like that. By day six, Casey had worked his way up to five ball patterns. His ability to read patterns was becoming stronger, but he would still struggle with certain shots. He still wasn't entirely trusting his cue ball path, which would usually result in a missed shot. But when these problem shots arose, we would just sticker them up and he would shoot them over and over, as well as write them down in his notebook for later. By the end of the first week, we discovered well over 25 problem shots. These are all shots that Casey would log in his notebook to work on at night. And Casey was learning how important it is to study his game. To reach a high level, he needs to constantly monitor his game for any weaknesses. By the end of the first week, Casey had worked hard and removed a majority of the problem shots from his logbook. But this is a process that he needs to continue long after I'm gone. You just have slow roll? Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna, yeah, I could probably, I was going to hit it real high, I mean high, but slow. I was just going to roll off for real. I would just slow roll it in. Okay. Real easy. You already got camera with a big angle. Okay. You just shoot into the left side of the pie. Okay. Near the end of the second week, we worked on one rail kicks and breaking. Casey is like a lot of players who kick by feel. When a top player kicks by feel, it's because they've put in hundreds of hours practicing their kicks. If a player kicks by feel and they haven't put in the practice time, they're always going to be inconsistent in their kicking. So on this day, we worked on one rail kicks and one rail kicks off the end rail. These are easy to use systems, but they still require a lot of practice to become comfortable with them. That's pretty good. Um, so let's say you want to hit that one. Let's put it right here. 40, 20, wide angle. I'm just hit the trigger. You can hit 20 or 21, so it's wide. And these are systems that Casey will have to work on long after I'm gone. Any sort of system, whether it's for banking or kicking, needs to become second nature before attempting them during competition. We then spent quite a bit of time on his breaking. KC, like most players, tries to hit the rack as hard as possible, but can't seem to control the cue ball. KC's main priority should be cue ball control on the break. So we began dropping his speed down little by little. We needed to find the speed at which he can start controlling the cue ball. I also had him find a spot on the rail that he can aim at which will allow him to strike the one ball full. So we finally determined that his control speed is about 50% of what his normal brake speed is. We then slowly started having him increase his brake speed. But as he increased his brake speed, his accuracy started to decrease slightly and it began striking the one ball more on the right side. So to correct this, I had him shift his aim on the rail slightly to the right. But to become consistent at striking the one ball full at high speed, it's going to take a great deal of training. For now I had him focus more on his control speed break until he can start controlling the cue ball more consistently.
It's the end of the 14 days. I'm really excited to be back on path. I, I wasn't training correctly. I wasn't getting any better. Before when I used to, used to practice, I would just throw the balls out on the table and shoot them in. I wasn't playing real precision position and I wasn't playing a more refined speed. Now I'm, now I'm practicing playing the ghost and trying to run out the pattern that I intended to run from the start to the finish and taking, taking notes and putting my problem shots in the book to work on later. My training is going to have to be a lot more focused on, on hard work and working on the stuff that I really need to work on to get better instead of, instead of just knocking balls around. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to shoot drills and patterns and, and really work on, on what I've learned to keep continuing getting better. I'm super excited to have this opportunity and really thankful that Tor and Zero X come to help me and uh, got me back on the path to training the right way. It was it was definitely an experience. There was a uh, you know times when it's brutal and and kind of kind of hard to see yourself struggling, but in the end it, it really pays off and and I know that I'm I'm very well confident that I'm going to keep getting stronger now. The issues that Casey struggled with over the last 20 years in his journey to become a stronger player are issues that many players have in common. Casey based his pattern play on a limited knowledge of shots, which forced him to choose tougher runouts. Without a game plan, Casey was constantly getting into trouble after only one or two shots. When Casey didn't play well, he blamed it on his fundamentals. He was constantly tweaking his grip, stroke, and stance instead of dealing with the real issues, which are problem shots and table management. Casey's practice sessions weren't focused on his problem areas. He was simply throwing balls out on the table and shooting them with no real focus. Now Casey has a new approach to his training. Time will now be allocated to different areas of his game that need work, like problem shots, breaking, pattern play, safeties, kicking, and banking. Now, when he's playing pool, he will log any problem shots in his notebook to work on later during his training sessions. To reach a higher level, he needed to become his own coach and demand more out of his game. By the end of the 14 days, Casey was reading patterns much better and had a larger repertoire of shots. He was now thinking three and four balls ahead and using the angles to help move the cue ball around the table. He still has a lot of work ahead of him, but he now has a winning game plan to help him become the pool monster he's always wanted to be. Janet Atwell, been playing pool since I was 19 years old. Started playing on the pro circuit in 2004, and just uh, in 2013 took a break, got diagnosed with breast cancer, and so I've really haven't played any since then. To speak of, uh, I play league night with uh, some of the folks in my pool room on Tuesday nights. And outside of that, that's pretty much all that I've played for the last couple of years. Um, pool's my passion, and I look forward to trying to get my game back where it was and far beyond that point so that I can finish in the top 10 of the WPBA Pro events versus in the top 16 to 20. So. Hopefully you're the one to take me there and I'm excited to have you.